something you'll notice about my lenses is a lot of them have lens gears on them, but for the most part, they're just on the zoom portion of the lens. And that's because unfortunately Nikon has decided that despite the fact that the focus ring is controlled completely digitally, they would rather just have some weird digital system as opposed to letting us customize the focus ring to uh, behave in a linear fashion so that having a focus gear on your focus ring is actually useful. So most of these lenses, the focusing doesn't actually work with the- I made the video and now there's a firmware update. It was me, I did it. I, I changed the course of all the Nikon developers. I forced them to do this. I went right down to Japan and I went to the coders and I pointed my camera at them and I says, make this manual focus. Just like Steve Jobs, I just slammed this on the desk. I said, make this manual focus. And now we have it. So you're welcome. All right, so what has actually changed? So this is my Z6 II. This firmware update comes from the Z6 II and Z7 II. And if you have the proper lens firmware, which was updated a while ago, and that's why this whole, I even brought this up in my last video was because they added this feature to the Z9 and it really just seemed like something that could easily be brought to the Z6 II and Z7 II. And I really hope it comes to the Z6 and Z7 as well. I don't see any reason why this shouldn't be an option on all Z cameras, Z5, Z50, bring it on. I think this is a super normal, average run of the mill feature and I'm just really excited that it's here. If your lens and your camera are updated to the proper firmwares, then you need to go to the pencil here and go to F and then it's F9, focus ring rotation range. If you are a photographer, I'm also gonna recommend that you try this feature. I'm a videographer. I, I would say anybody who shoots a video on their Nikon, run out, download this, make this happen, figure out how it works because it's super important. But even if you're just a photographer, I think this makes more sense in my head. I would choose maybe one of these higher numbers, higher than what I'm gonna end up with. But uh, I think it just makes more sense to, to know that if I get to this point, that's my farthest distance than if I get back. And then you can customize it, you know? If you are gonna be at a uh, basketball game and you're gonna be follow, focusing from far distances, maybe especially if you're using the teleconverter with this, uh, with this lens, I would recommend, you know, going for a, a little bit of a higher number because you're gonna need that turn. But if you go to F9, you can make a decision. By default, it's gonna be set to non-linear. So that means if you turn the lens barrel really fast, it will quickly go a far distance. And then if you turn the same amount of degrees, but slower, it will travel a shorter distance. Um, so it's not a linear exact uh, response to how much you turn it. I don't think that makes a whole ton of sense. I think this makes more sense. And the fact that you can customize it is the advantage of having it be digital. So I still think it's worth being digital. I don't, th I don't think you should go back and buy manual focus lessons because those aren't customizable. What I'm able to do is add this device here. This is called a follow focus. So this is a cheap one from Tilta. Uh, Small Rig makes these as well. There's much more expensive like manual follow focuses. Then there's also like the Tilta Nucleus Nano. That's a focus ring that a lot of people use that's uh, electronic. And then Tilta also has a more expensive option that's right there in the middle. And then there's super way expensive ones with like super low latency and all that kind of good stuff. But basically what this means is that I can set my little markers here to be the correct um, focus. And then I can just work from within these boundaries to uh, focus and know that, that every time I go to the certain points, that's gonna be the exact location where I'm gonna wanna be. So right now I've got it set. If I go to the end here, that's my infinity focus. And then if I pull it towards me, I can go all the way as close as I can focus. So my far distance point to be focused on the strings there and my close focus point to be set on the grip head there. So I can very easily go in between them, fast or slow, it doesn't matter. Because every time I get to this point, that's gonna be perfectly in focus. All right, so what you can do with this is you can set two focus points and pull between them. So you can see this a lot in movies and television shows if you're especially in the sideways view of a car and you've got any kind of shallow depth of field going on, 
you may pull focus between the two characters' faces. And a car is a great example because those faces aren't going to be moving around a whole ton. So you can basically set your two focus points, kind of like I've done here with the ukulele strings and this grip head. You can then pull focus between the two characters while they're talking or when you need to look at someone's face. What I can do here is I can start to turn the manual focus ring so that activates manual focus for me. And then I can set my two points perfectly. I can use my lovely Nikon focus peaking feature. And since I'm now the god of Nikon who decides what software they bring to life, focus peaking should happen all the time, whether in manual focus or not. I guess that's a processor thing, but definitely in a Z6 III camera body, and I believe in the Z9, uh, we need to have focus peaking all the time because it's an essential feature. I'm using it on both my Atomos recorders right now, so I can just see that tinge of green on my glasses, tinge of green here on my handle, so I know that those things are in focus from far away. Obviously, I'm anticipating this coming to all of the uh, Pro Holy Trinity lenses. 24 to 70, 2.8 is uh, especially one that I'd like this feature to come out for because as we know now, it's only for this exact lens on a Z6 or Z7 II or on a Z9. So this feature is not like completely ready to go rocking and rolling for everybody yet. But I would love to see it come to more and more cameras. And I think that there are some more lenses that could really benefit from this. Um, I definitely think the longer focal lengths are a better use case for this, but bring it, bring it everywhere. I, I don't think this feature should be hard to implement. So I think we should just kind of go for it and bring it everywhere. So the way I see this working in my workflow is I'm using autofocus and it just isn't catching. Maybe it's super dark or the objects are moving erratically and I just want to manually override. I'm just going to reach down over here. I'm going to grab the manual focus ring and I'm going to start focusing on exactly what I want. Um, there are people who can manual focus like a boss and track subjects and keep things in focus. I don't anticipate using that all that much. I personally am just going to use it to kind of override and then have, have the autofocus take back over. As you can see, I've got all three of my Z bodies running right now. I need autofocus for that. I, I just I have to have it. If you want to be a solo producer with some kind of bokeh and uh, not moving and you're videotaping more than just non-moving subjects, you need autofocus. And so that is why I think this is a good tool for sometimes, but my all the time tool is still going to be autofocus. I feel like this ability to autofocus and then manual focus as a great example of me and my camera working together and becoming cyborg-like. So when the autofocus is running, it's the camera trying to compute and decide and make decisions about what to focus on. And a lot of times it can be pretty good at that. I definitely think the very first place where it falls apart is face detection is a lot easier than some of the other things. So when I'm trying to track objects or scenes or things like that, I'm really going to rely on my ability to use both systems, autofocus and whatever mode seems to make sense to me, and then being able to just make a slight turn here and start manual focusing and getting my great focus peaking up on the screen, getting exactly what I want, and then either leaving it or activating autofocus again and see if it can kind of pick up on what I decided to focus on. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. So I am truly thrilled that this feature that I was excited for and thought was a good idea came to fruition and, and happened. I think that's awesome. I think it shows uh, Nikon's commitment to bring everything they can from the Z9 to their older cameras, even as far back as the very first mirrorless cameras that they released, uh, the Z6 and Z7. Um, I know there's a lot of discourse online. A lot of the Nikon discourse is just circling around taking pictures, and that's not something that I care too much about, so I can kind of tune all that out. But then there's also all this just negative, negative, negative discourse. Uh, there's people who are irritated about the Z9. They're mad that Nikon's putting all their focus there, and they didn't make the specific niche camera that they were looking for. And I, I just, I have to tune all of that out because, look, I'm a Nikon videographer. Like, I am not a priority for this company. And that's fine with me. I, I picked the Z6 
for a certain reasons. And at the time I thought it was the best option for what I wanted. And I'm using two Z6s to record this right now. I mean, part of that is because I wanted to show the Z6 II in the video, but I still think these are great cameras. And uh, if you take a look at the A7 III, you take a look at the um, EOS R, which are the cameras that I was cross shopping when I picked the Z6. Uh, I don't think people are using those in their workflows in the same way that I would confidently bring out my Z6 and Z7, uh, my two Z6s. So look, I'm not gonna say Nikon's perfect. I'm not gonna say that I don't really dream about the Z9 autofocus all the time, but I don't really think that these autofocus systems need an overhaul. I think we just need more quality of life improvements and we just need to get excited about what's coming next or get off the train, sell your Z cameras. You know, they have a great resale value because they're such great piece of equipment. Um, and I just really don't have any interest in whining about autofocus. Matt Irwin made a long, long video talking about what he thinks happened and he makes some good points in there. One thing that stuck out to me from Matt Irwin's video was that he mentioned that the Z6 and Z7 got firmware what, what even firmware are they on? They're on such a high firmware now, but uh, there was a big .0 release late last year, and that's awesome, but the Z6 II just got .4. So I think Z6 II 2.0 will be an interesting turning point to see whether they ever, Nikon ever really thinks that there's a lot of features to add to ever make it 2.0. You know, they could just keep going 2.4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine they could do six more releases without ever saying this is 2.0 this is a big deal this is new um if if that's the case that's fine i bought the z6 II with just the promise of 4k 60 coming at some point but everything else about the camera i was satisfied with so i just view all this extra stuff now as gravy as additional ways to help me out in my workflow and this was one of those features that i talked a lot about a while back and I really feel passionately about it and I'm really glad that my head was in the same place as Nikon's was and we were able to come to this awesome agreement here where now I get to have uh, this awesome feature that I really like. There's a lot of discourse about Nikon cameras that I just don't really care for. There's a lot of stuff about wildlife photography and just taking pictures in general and I just kind of tune all that out because I just don't really care. And for me, when I bought this camera, I really wanted USB charging and I was really excited about 4K60, really bummed that it didn't have internal ProRes or 10-bit of any kind. And none of those things are going to change and there's no features that I'm waiting for in a firmware to make me want to use this camera again. And I just, I understand that the internet is gonna collect the people who are most passionate about certain things, but I just don't understand all of the whining about stuff that just, isn't going to change. Like I saw a feature that I thought was cool, which was manual focus for this lens specifically. And I said, hmm, that should come to the other bodies because that's not something that's limited by the processor. And that was a realistic expectation. And look, it happened, incredible. But if you choose some crazy harebrained thing, like bringing the triple autofocus system to these cameras, that's not gonna happen. And if you need that kind of focus, I think you gotta look somewhere else. Okay, so my hair light just died, so that's a good uh, indicator that I should probably start to wrap things up. So what, what am I trying to say here? In summary, this feature is awesome. It's great, it's implemented well, I have no complaints. I'm really glad that uh, this videography focus feature was delivered to this camera that is more, one of the more video focused cameras that Nikon has ever made. I, I would say it's second, right? Second after the Z9. And I think I would put the Z50 after that. Maybe I'm crazy, but so I'm really glad this feature came out. I talked a lot about it in my last video um, on my Nikon lenses. And so I think it's really important for me to give kudos where it's due to uh, this feature. One of my videos that I'm working on that's coming out soon is gonna involve me doing a lot of B-roll behind the camera on pretty small objects. And I anticipate using this feature a lot during that process. And it's so great that Nikon can ship features that are ready to use and I, I just figure them out and start using them in my workflow. And I think that's a really cool place to be with these cameras where they just kind of, little things just kind of come out here and there 
and it's something cool that you can use and makes your life better. That's, that's all cool, and I'm glad that that worked out in this instance. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, go ahead and update your camera and lens. Uh, I haven't found any bugs or problems with the new firmware. I haven't noticed any better autofocus systems, but I haven't really been playing around with that. I've just been playing around with manual focus because that's where my focus has been. So enjoy these new software updates and uh, keep using your cameras for photos or videos, whatever it is, because that's really what's important.